Well, you've lined these three specific cars up for some reason. I have. Go on then. Uh, we had a question from... I actually didn't write... You didn't write his name down and I didn't think to either. We'll put it on the screen as text, which you hate doing. This man. Uh, what three changes can be made to increase horsepower for the least amount of cash, I assume that's meant to say. You yes. wrote power. Yeah. It's not like I knew the question before we filmed this. <laughs> um, smooth, Steve. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, okay, great question. Um, we've actually had some really good questions coming in, so keep it up. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to slightly modify this question because it's... Um, it depends on what engine you've got and the condition it's in. So we're kind of going to answer the question in what are the most cost-effective um, upgrades or things to do to my engine to get the best from it. Um, and we'll try and I'll try and keep price in mind and, and sort of comment on that as we go through. So we've got three different vehicles here because obviously we could be talking about vastly different engines. We've got a carburetted uh, 3.5, we've got a fuel-injected 3.9, and then we've got a fuel-injected P38 no distributor 4.6. So I feel that there's, um, you know, obviously there's lots that could sit in between all of that. Um, but we'll jump in and uh, start off with carbureted engines. Um, and something that could actually apply to all of them in terms of wear, wearing components and then specific sort of carb questions. Anybody that uh, has thought we should invest in some microphones because of road noise when we're filming outside, you've been looking up, haven't you? I have. And we're going to, aren't we? Eventually. Yes. <laughs> Right, let's, uh, let's look under the bonnet of the pot. Okay, so um, we'll start with something that's very generic across all Rover V8 engines, which is um, wear, basically. It doesn't matter whether you're carburetted, fuel injected, have a dizzy or not, what specification your engine is, who did the heads or anything like that. If you've bought a used vehicle with an engine in or a used engine for your kit car or whatever, the biggest loss in my mind of, of power and efficiency uh, across any Rover V8 is generally camshaft wear. Um, so we typically see cams wear at 80,000 miles upwards, hugely depending on how they've been maintained. We've seen them wear a lot earlier. Um, we've seen them be perfect at 150,000 miles if they've been really well maintained. Um, so I'd say the, the biggest bang for buck uh, effectively is check your camshaft out. If you've just bought an engine or just bought a vehicle with it in, whip the inlet manifold off. It's generally not a, a, a big job, certainly not on a carbureted engine. And um, check the cam out, check the bottom of the lifters, make sure they're not going concave, they should be perfectly flat. We're going to do a video as well on what to check and replace at the same time as replacing a camshaft in a few videos time. Um, but yeah, that I would say is number one thing, is engine condition, you know, do a compression check, um, check the camshaft out, general wear and tear stuff, get those, uh, those, those torques and horsepowers back that the engine should have had and would have had at the beginning of its life if it has uh, had a, a longer life. Uh, it's, it's simple. Cam kits typically, you know, £500 for most of the stuff you need to, to do the job, but again, we'll cover that in a, a separate video specifically to camshaft changes. So once you know you've got, um, I'll tell you what, we'll do a cut here, because then if I mess the nut bit, next bit up, you can just do your thing. Yeah, okay. Right. Right, so um, you've, you've bought a vehicle, it's got a carburetted V8 in. Let's pretend we've got twin carburetors on here at the moment. It's actually got one of the lovely Edelbrock carburetors on there. But, um, so you've, you've took the inlet manifold off, as we've just said. It's got a really good camshaft in. You're, you know, over the moon, you've got a really nice engine internally, and you want to know where to go to just extract a bit more power from it. Um, first thing we always um, uh, talk about here, and is well worth the upgrade, is ignition systems. If you've got a Rover electronic distributor, we can upgrade that with our amplifier and magna core plug leads. I've had a really good question about our amplifier coming as well, which we'll, we'll do another little video of in a, uh, after this, Steve. Actually. Okay. We'll post them both up at the same time, because we need your help. Not your help, but their help. Um, so ignition systems, if you get a bigger spark to your combustion chamber when your air and fuel are squished together, ready to ignite, the bigger spark you get and the longer the duration that spark is there for, the, more, the, the faster burn rate you get. Um, which means you burn your fuel more efficiently, you extract more power from that um, burn as well because the piston's still nice and high in its uh, stroke, so you, while that huge explosion's happening, rather than a slow burn where the piston would be slightly lower down the bore when the explosion is really sort of finishing and you're getting the power from it. So 
getting a bigger spark, making sure the ignition system's in tip-top condition, I would say is number one uh, for any engine with a, a distributor. Uh, we'll cover other engines in a minute. And um, biggest bang for buck there, definitely. In terms of carburetors, that's probably the next place I would look. If you're on twin carbs, um, obviously upgrading to the Elebrock carburetor is a really nice step up. You get increased airflow and the engine is a nice big air pump, so the more air it can pump the better. Um, however, obviously it's, it's a reasonable chunk of money. Um, lots of people love it for reliability factor. It, you know, forgetting the performance increase it gives you, it, it's just a lot more reliable being a new carburetor, uh, a lot less complex than twin carburetor setups in terms of balancing and everything like that as well. That being said, we do get a lot of vehicles in that like the um, aesthetics of the twin carburetors under the bonnet if they've got a classic and, and want something looking original, so we do do a lot of work with twin carbs these days as well. Um, and obviously some people's budgets might not be able to stretch to the Edelbrock carburetor. So in those instances, the biggest thing you can do with twin carbs is A, make sure they are in as good a condition as you can get them. You know, uh, rebuild kits for them are generally available, both Solux and, and SUs, and, you know, the Strombergs and SUs. Um, after that, making sure they're balanced. The amount of vehicles we get in here that have been and been tuned and, you know, the emissions are okay and, and it drives all right, we put uh, uh, an airflow meter, a uh, CFM meter on it, on the carburetors and they're massively out of balance um, so making sure the carburetors are well balanced uh, and then well tuned um, is, is you know very low cost thing to do but has huge benefits um, maybe not in terms of horsepower but uh, at the top end uh, but how often are you driving at five and a half thousand rpm but in terms of smoothness and drivability res throttle response and torque down the bottom mid rev range where most people are driving you know 90 percent of the time um, having twin carbs really well balanced it's night and day difference it really is night and day so um, yeah I, I'd say you know if you've got a carburetor engine three things are ignition the actual carbs themselves whether you upgrade or balance and making sure you've got uh, the right camshaft in there that's um, got full lift on all lobes there you go so answer one is actually three answers yeah now we'll move on to that one and do three answers excellent <laughs> Okay, so injected engines um, with distributors. I'm not going to cover flapper injection here. Um, we see most customers that we speak to with flapper injection, uh, if they're sticking with that and not upgrading to an Elebrock carburetor or, or a hot wire injection, um, they're, they're sticking with it because it's a, an original vehicle, it's a standard engine because it's an original vehicle and um, you know, the history of the engine, etc. matches the car. So they're not so worried about upgrades, it's more about just maintaining it and keeping it running. Um, so hot wire injection system we use across all of our engine sizes. Um, two basic principles carried over from the carburetor section that we just discussed though. Camshaft, making sure you've got a good condition camshaft and upgrading the ignition system as two big boxes ticked uh, which will you know make, ensure you can get the best from the engine. With regards to the injection system there's a, a few things you can do to a make sure it's working properly uh, making sure it's got a genuine airflow meter on it, TPS voltages, all the sensors are working correctly, including lambda sensors if you've got them. And no problem with running lambda sensors without cats. If you've got an earlier one, you want to upgrade to lambda for some feedback and extra fuel efficiency, it can all be done. Um, injectors are probably worth just mentioning. So um, these are what are considered really you know an, an old lucas injector they're a single hole they have a spray pattern that's um not like throwing a bucket of fuel into an engine because i've seen that on dragsters engines but um they do not have a modern spray pattern like a bosch 12 point uh, injector like what i'm using on twin turbo tuesday um we can upgrade them to a four point bosch injector which obviously does allow the fuel to atomize better um however in terms of bangs for buck um, if you've got a relatively standard engine, 3.9 or 4.6 with this injection system on, I would say it's better to have those injectors more cost effective, to have those injectors cleaned and balanced, uh, which we do here, over fitting the Bosch injectors. Um, you know, you can spend the extra money you would apply to the Bosch injectors on upgrading the ignition system, etc. 
In terms of upgrades on this injection system, obviously the ECU chips make a big difference, Optimax and Tornado, depending on the specification of your engine. Uh, we see a really nice increase in drivability through bottom, mid, rev range and torque there. Uh, and if you've done cam and heads and things, the Tornado chip's going to do a lot more for the top end uh, for you than the Optimax, which is designed for a bog standard 3.9. Um, then you get into the airflow side of things, which is um, I would say carbon fibre trumpets, super flare carbon fibre trumpets in here which fit in the standard trumpet base, allow a little bit more airflow into that engine um, and then cats, if you've got cats on the exhaust, removing restrictive, probably damaged old 400 cell um, cats, replacing them with something like a 200 cell sports cat. Um, an engine's an air pump, more air you get in, you have to get rid of that as well and as long as the fuel is there to support the air you'll make more power. Um, yeah, so the carbon fibre super flare trumpet, so a really nice mid-range um, upgrade on this injection system, uh, not expensive, and that's what I would do on this injection system for, for a limited budget. Um, obviously there's a lot more you can do, but um, yeah, that, that's where I'd go as a sort of three things. If the injection system's working well, it's all good. Put some carbon fibre super flare trumpets in, deal with the exhaust. We've touched camshaft, we've touched the ignition system. Jobs are good. On to that one. On to that one. Right, so um, P38 Range Rovers, Discovery 2s, don't have distributors. Um, so you have the GEMS version of the engine and you have the Thor version of the, um, of the engine. And here we see the Thor version. Still camshaft. It's a little bit more work on the Thor engine to get down to the camshaft to inspect it, but I would say it's still well worthwhile if it's a car you've bought. Uh, and looking to make sure everything's working nice and you know an upgrade in power. If you take a worn camshaft out and replace it with um, even our, our what we use as a standard camshaft, our part of a Torque Max, which is designed to give a bit more bottom end grunt, um, you know you're going to see a big increase there because you're taking out a worn component that, that worn camshaft. Ignition on these engines, um, obviously you don't have a distributor. Um, so making sure you're running genuine coil packs. We see a lot of aftermarket um, coil packs on the Thor engines that, that give issues. So making sure they're Bosch on these. GEMS coil packs aren't generally an issue, but again, making sure you've got genuine ones on there. Uh, Magna core plug leads, always, they're fit and forget. Um, I call them faff, fit and forget, good for 10 years plus. We've got customers 15, more than 15 years with them on the car. Uh, still going strong, no issue. Just remember when you remove them, pull them by the boot, not the lead. Um, obviously spark plugs, um, I haven't mentioned spark plugs on any of these engines, but making sure you've got the, the right spark plug on. We run non-resistor spark plugs in, on all those other engines. These still have a resistor spark plug because of um, voltages and things I don't understand in the coil pack going on. It's better to run uh, those on the, the Thor engines. So um, that deals with the ignition side of it making sure you're getting full spark potential from the coil pack down to the correct spark plug. After that, um, nice and easy, chip upgrade, or it's not really a chip, it's a remap of the Thor ECU, uh, a chip upgrade in the GEMS ECU. Um, again, gives um, big gains um, because you're remapping ignition and the fuel. On these we, we gain uh, spark uh, intensity so that's allowing the, the air and fuel to, to burn uh, better and we also obviously making sure advanced curves and things are correct on distributors whereas if we had a microphone this motor might not be an issue right now he's gone it's fine um, so whereas these um, obviously the ignition timing everything is done in the computers so the remaps that we do um, advance that and and correct the fuel and ignition table to where they really ought to have been from Land Rover but Land Rover dulled things a little bit um, so that makes a big difference to driving these I've even had people report back to me wow when I'm on cruise control after your remap the engine doesn't kick down when it's going up a hill mm. um, you know I, I, that, that, that comment always stands out to me and I've had that a few times because um, it goes to show that the cruise control always reacts in the same manner your foot doesn't always um, you know, it's a computer program, so it's always reacting the same. And people have said to me, going up this hill near mine on the way home from work, whatever, cruise control always used to kick down third gear when, when, you know, before the remap. Afterwards, it's not doing it. You've got more torque. Yeah, it's a big difference. Big difference, yeah. Um, after that, on the GEMS engine, you can still do the carbon fibre intakes. Obviously, exhaust rules apply there as well. On the Thor engines, there's not really a lot you can do. Here, 
um, or that you would need to do there unless you're into cylinder head changes and um, uh, possibly a camshaft upgrade as well. So um, yeah, that's that's really on the on the Thor. You're limited in terms of um, not necessarily cheap, but um, cost-effective upgrades, keeping budgets in mind. Um, because really on a Thor engine, if you've got a 4 litre, you can upgrade to a 4.6 if your budget allows. On a 4.6, um, you really want to put some stage 3 cylinder heads on it, or the Merlin stage 4 cylinder heads on it, to allow that engine to breathe nicely because they never upgraded it, uh, the cylinder heads. Which leads nicely into the next question, which I'll get you to read out in a minute because I haven't yes. quite finished. Uh, cylinder head upgrades still apply on the 4 litre, of course, because they weren't upgraded from the 3.5. Um, hopefully that. I've attempted to answer the question that we read out at the beginning. There was certainly an answer. <laughs> it's a bit tricky because there's so many versions of engine. Um, but the next one that we're going to attempt to answer with my rambles, as I do. The next question is, what changed with Rover V8 cylinder heads over the years in yeah. terms of compression ratio and combustion chamber size, which is the we'll, same thing. But. We'll line them all up and we'll take a good look at them all, I reckon. Um, That'll be that, that then. then. <laughs>